about HTML and uh, what it is and how we can use it, let's look, look at some examples so that we can see some of the ways that HTML can be employed to, to build more interesting pages for our uh, applications. So we're going to go into GAE Web Dev and we're going to go into step two this time. And there's a HTML examples uh, file there. So, uh, and then we have this GAE project. So we're going to start putting these into a project folder so that we can separate them from the documentation or anything else that we might want to have as like a README or just one of these tutorials. So let's go ahead and type teach me HTML examples.md. And this is going to start a, a little tutorial here. So um, the first thing, if we look at our application, uh, we're going to go into GAE project and uh, the first thing that we'll see here, there's a main pie. And uh, if we look at that, you know, you can actually use this edit main.py and that will actually pull up our editor. So we can kind of see there's something new here. And that's this flask.redirect. So flask.redirect is going to allow us to take requests here and then redirect to some other URL. So this redirect is going to move uh, our, our uh, request to this S in this uh, S folder. Uh, you know, the folder, this is a, this is a, a not a logic this is a logical folder not a physical folder this is kind of the request that's coming in so uh this is going to be like mywebsite.com forward slash s forward slash index.html and it's going to take any requests and redirect them there so that we can actually uh, service them from that that spot so there we go and then we're, we're going to give it code 302 we're going to get into some of the http codes in just one more lecture but uh we're going to redirect users to this new page now we can run our app server. We're going to go ahead and type dev app server app.yaml. It's going to bring it up. And then uh, once that's loaded, we should be able to use this link. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, that's going to bring us right into our, uh, our set of uh, files here. <coughs> so we're going to go back and forth between the rendered HTML here and what it looks like. So I'm going to open this editor so that we can see things. And in my static files folder, I'm going to have a couple of different files here. And you can see there's a few images as well. So the first thing that we're going to uh, take a look at, if we look at this tutorial, um, we can look at index.html. So let's pull that up here. We're going to open that file. And you can see that there are some elements that we've already seen. So we've seen the HTML element. And we've talked about the head so you can see here the head element is going to contain a title element and that's going to be HTML samples uh, so this is what's going to be represented in the tab in your browser and then um, if we move down a little bit further you can see we have a body and that's everything here this is going to be the content that's displayed to the user and you can see we have a header which header is one of those semantic tags it has meaning to uh, you know to the browser or other tools that might you know things like screen readers uh, that are able to kind of call out different pieces then we have h1 which is a heading and we can see uh, heading here is going to be a, a bigger, you know, sort of higher, uh, higher font size. And then we have nav, which is one of those semantic elements. And then we have a, the a stands for anchor, which uh, is, is how you actually represent links in your browser. So each one of these is going to go to uh, a, a different page. So when you click on the link, you're going to go to a page called links.html or images.html or lists.html or sections.html or tables or forms.html. And then at the bottom, we have another uh, semantic tag, a section, and this it's going to have uh, this little con this content here. This is an HTML file. It has links to lots of samples. So a little bit more detail here in the uh, tutorial if you want to take a look at that. Then uh, if we go to links, so if we go to the links page, here are a bunch of different links. And uh, if we go to open this up, we can see, well, we'll make this a little bit bigger here so we can see a lot of it. Uh, similar head, similar, similar header, same nav. Uh, but now we have a few other uh, different elements here. So we have a P element here at the top, and this is going to be where we see links right here. So P is an element for paragraph, and that just allows us to create this sort of one line separated text, uh, but it's just normal plain text. But we're going to give this element an ID. Now, every element in HTML can have an ID. And as we start using JavaScript and other in CSS, uh, those IDs are going to have more meaning. But one thing that we can do with IDs 
is we can click, uh, we can have a link to a different ID. So if you can see, this is going to be a lot of, uh, you know, this is a bunch of uh, empty uh, elements here that's going to take us down to the bottom. So this uh, this link here, a href with the octothorpe or the pound sign to the bottom, that's going to look for an ID on the page called bottom. So what happens is when I click this link, it's going to pull me all the way down to the bottom. And if I click this link, it's going to take me all the way back up to the top. And that's because there's a link down here, href with the, uh, the pound sign or octothorpe to the top. And it's going to bring me right back up to this particular paragraph, the, you know, where we have that, that matching ID. So this allows you to, to jump around a page pretty effectively. Now, you can also have a link to a website. This link will go to Amazon.com, and that's the most common thing, you know, is that you'd have a link to a page or a website. So href, and then uh, we want to start with HTTP, uh, that's Hypertext Transfer Protocol, colon, forward slash, forward slash, and then the name of the website. So if we click that, then it should open a new page. There we go. That's Amazon.com. Look at that. Fun stuff. Men's style is under $30. It's a uh, maybe maybe this is probably not the most fashionable. Oh, I haven't signed in. So hey, it's just it's making a guess here. It's a uh, it's assuming that I don't spend a lot on fashion. It's probably correct. Um, all right. So uh, the next one is a link to another page on the website. So if we click on this one, you can see that's going to be our tables example, and that's just going to a page called tables.html. So what's going to happen here? is we talk about the you know we talk about the folders on our system we can also think about folders as they pertain to a url so when we're looking at these uh, samples we uh, we have this this uh, we're in this sort of like forward slash s forward uh, slash directory so when we have a plain link like this tables.html that's going to just go to this file in the same folder now the next one, this is going to uh, send us to another page on this website, but open in a new window. So if we click on this one, we're gonna, it's going to pop up, and you can see we can kind of go back and forth between those two tabs. Um, now, now this next one, this is an absolute link. Uh, so if this is sort of the difference between relative paths and absolute paths, when we have just tables.html, that's going to go to whatever the folder is that's in our URL, uh, it's, it's going to take us directly to, to that same folder. Whereas when we start with a forward slash, this is going to start at the root of our website. So if we're at www.mywebsite.com, uh, whenever someone clicks on this link, it's always going to take them to www.mywebsite.com forward slash s forward slash list.html, no matter where they are in that page. Whereas each one of these tables links would just take them to, you know, if you were at uh, www.mywebsite.com forward slash something forward slash something else, and uh, you clicked on a link, it would look for tables in that some forward slash something forward slash something else folder, uh, and it would take you to that page. So this one will always take you to the same place this one will take you to a relative location based on the URL so that should just about do it for the links I think we, we talked about each one of these links um, you know we can click on this link but it's not you know it doesn't really do anything too magical it's just using an absolute link uh, but in this case it actually takes us to the same place so moving from the uh, links example let's go to the next page here and we can see oh images so if we click on image samples, here we have a, a bunch of different images, and uh, some of these images have attributes set, so you can see different things here, and you can warp the image a little bit. So let's look at our images.html page, and this one is a little bit more brief, but you can see here uh, the IMG element is what actually uh, represents an image. So this is what we're looking at right now, this slides header. This is just a screenshot of the, the header for the slides that we use for this class. It's an image called slidesheader.png, so IMG, and then there's a source attribute, SRC equals, and then we put that attribute in these double quotes. And we also have an alt, you know, so this is going to provide explanation. This is a good thing to provide. Uh, this kind of explains what the, the image is. If for some reason it doesn't load or, you know, this can also be good for, you know, accessibility reasons. And typically if we just uh, hover our mouse over this, uh, we, we can often get a tooltip. It looks like I'm not getting it probably because I'm using a touchpad uh, in this case. But um, this can also be used to, to define a tooltip for the image. And here I'm specifying the width and the height uh, for the image. Now. I always recommend using the width and the height because there's an annoying thing that happens on websites where, you know, and this happens to me all the time, you are clicking on a, a, a button 
and then uh, you, you, something loads right before you click on the button uh, as you're in the middle of clicking and you click on something else or something loads above the page and the button jumps down and you miss it. And what often happens is you do that once and then you go back and you try to do it again, but then the same thing happens and you do it again and you say you're gonna wait, but then something delays the loading of that button and then the whole layout changes. Um, and you just do it over and over. It's a remarkably frustrating situation. So when you provide the width and the height attributes here, uh, what you actually do is you, you tell the page how to lay it out. It basically reserves space for those so that you can avoid that little bit of frustration with your users. And you know this next one, there's not anything too different about it. If you take a look at the code, it's uh, you know we're providing an image, uh, a, a source URL for that image, uh, an alternate uh, explanation for that image, a width and a height, and then again you can warp these images using the width and height. So this image uh, that we used originally was a uh, 1,133 pixels and 361 pixels high. And if we change that, you can kind of see how that looks different now. It's it's sort of compressed. So that's uh, that's something you can get from the images there. Now with lists, oh, let's go to the list page. So we'll see what it looks like here. Here we have lists. You have ordered lists and unordered lists. Uh, with lists, you have the OL element for defining an ordered list, and this will give you an ordered list one, two, three, four, five, six, and a or and then the UL is a unordered list, and this will give you the bullet points. And you can do a lot of things to customize these. We'll get into that in a later lecture. But LI is the element that you use for each list item. So here you can see item A, and you can see how that corresponds to this uh, this item A over here. So <clears throat> this will allow us to define uh, lists of items, and you can use ordered lists on an unordered list pretty easily. Now next up we have sections. Sections are usually used for semantic uh, elements, and you know this is the most disappointing part of this particular lecture because it doesn't really look like anything. Um, semantic elements don't really show up like anything until we tell HTML how they should actually be rendered. So each one of these is just going to show up on its own line. We have these elements that you see frequently in HTML called div elements, and these are just used to create different sections. Um, you know, they're, they're actually, they work pretty much the same way as the section semantic elements and article semantic elements and aside semantic elements. But in a later lecture, we're going to customize this a little bit so we can actually see what happens when we want to modify that and change the formatting. Um, so this one's not the most exciting, but we'll come back around to it. Uh, then we have tables. So tables uh, allow us to do a lot of different things, you know, with layout and, uh, you know, modifying the way that things are, are shown in, in a page. So if we take a look at the tables, uh, HTML here, we're going to see some interesting things. With tables, we start with a table element, and then uh, we have TR elements. These are table rows. At least I think that's what it stands for. I never really, you know, never really checked, but I assume it's table row. And then you can have TH elements. These are table headers. These aren't required, uh, but generally if you do have headers in your table, it's probably the proper way to do things. Uh, and you can kind of see how in this first table, uh, we have header one, header two, header three. So TH, TH, TH. And notice that we're beginning and ending these elements. And then we also have TD, which I think is table data. I'm, I'm not actually sure, but uh, TD is actually how you create each one of the individual cells for your table. So here you can see plain old cell, second cell, one more cell, uh, and then we have more and more. So, uh, and then, you know, when we're done with the row, we close the row element. When we're done with the table, we close the table element. Now, in this second table, we're not using headers, so you can see this is just going to look fine, and you can see here this is, you know, this is kind of all compressed together. There's not a lot of spacing here, but you can, that, that's four separate cells in our table. Now, we can also use the call span attribute, and that will allow us to make the columns span multiple, or make this uh, cell span multiple columns. So you can see this one takes up three columns, and that's going to take up just as much space as those three columns there. Uh, then we only need uh, two of the cells on this one because the first one takes up three uh, three columns and then the second one only takes up one. So then we also have, in addition to column span, we can ro span rows. So you can see here this particular cell is going to span three rows. So you can see this one is taking up three rows where each one of these is going to have uh, three different rows of its own. <clears throat> so yeah, there we go. So now that this one this one kind of flows into the next two rows, we only need three cells in each of these rows because uh, it, that, that cell sort of uh, expanded across all of them. 
Now, lastly, we have all of these form items. So forms is going to be there's there's a lot we can do here. So we'll take a look at this form samples. So form elements, we're, we're going to use these more when we get into handling requests and actually processing data that users are going to give us. So with form elements, we're typically providing some place for a user to give us some information. So one of these is a text area. Um, you know, so a text area is going to have, uh, you know, it's going to have the ability for you to enter certain text and, you know, submit this to a, a web page or to a web application. And, and these text areas are, are going to be a, a pretty straightforward element. You know, here we have, uh, let's go back to forms. Um, here we have, uh, there we go, there's our text area. So our text area is going to have a name, it's going to have, uh, it's going to have, uh, an, it could have an ID, it should have an ID, and then uh, you can also have disabled. So, and then you can have how many columns the, the text area should have, you, you can have whether it's read only, and here you can kind of see how this is laid out. So this particular line will show us the, the HTML for the text area. We're going to have a text area of 30 columns and 8 rows and then you can actually populate it by putting text in between those two elements so that's what that one's going to look like now beyond the text area we have select fields so we can have multiple select and we can have single select this is just a single select and this one will allow us to have multiple select you know you have to use control or command depending on if you're windows or, or mac os uh, but you know you can select multiple items in a multiple select box and the way that we we create those is we use a select HTML element and then options inside and these options can also have values but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit further when we start processing these inputs uh, we can also identify how many things should be shown and multiple will allow us to uh, identify that this select uh, this select um, control should have multiple options selectable now if we go a little bit further we have buttons so you can see buttons here this is just a button it doesn't do anything it's just a clickable button and uh, buttons are pretty straightforward you know we can have input type button uh, that's it there's not much to a, uh, input type equals button and then the, the what that button has on it is uh, going to be specified in that value element and we'll typically use those when we get a little bit more into JavaScript so <clears throat> a couple of other things checkboxes checkbox are going to be input type checkbox and uh, that's you know that's pretty much it they're just going to exist out there so whatever labels you associate with them are just going to be plain HTML um, then we have uh, the uh, input the next one is a uh, some special ones you know so a color selector this is kind of nice you can kind of uh, you select a color um, you also have date selectors, so this is going to be a date option, so input type equals date. And all of these are pretty new in HTML. I think these were, were uh, included as part of the HTML5 uh, specification. So before that, you know, any of these things you built, you had to build them uh, sort of on your own out of JavaScript and HTML. Uh, and then there's some things that will do some basic uh, evaluation here. So like your email box will, uh, will validate something. So I can't just type in, you know, something that's not a, good, not a proper email. When I try to submit, that's actually actually going to validate it and tell me that that's not going to work uh, but we'll get into using these these uh, validators a little bit later so similarly here with the number I can't even type in you can kind of hear me typing here I can't even type something in that's not a number which is weird because you know if this was a hexadecimal number you know I, I could enter that but uh, you know the the number the number type won't even allow me to accept something uh, that's not a number there uh, password actually just masks the input but that's actually still stored and still sent normally so we'll talk about that a little bit when we get into processing input uh, radio elements um, here are a little bit different uh, you know a radio element uh, has to have the same name as other uh, radio elements in its group so um, we have a radio element you know you can see each one of these is going to be select only one of them in the group is selectable and that's because we have they all have the same name so in order to to make all these part of the same group we give them the same name and that allows us to select just one of them we also have a range element and this one allows us to set a maximum a minimum the step in the value so you can kind of see as we move this we can kind of this is going to be 0 50 100 150 2 250 and then the most basic text input is just a text box, input type text, and you can see that one here. There's nothing at all exciting about it. It's the simplest. In fact, if you have an input uh, without a type, it just defaults to a text box. 
and then time which is going to give us a little control for specifying a time and then a URL control that will allow us, us to validate a real URL but again none of these things really happen and you know if I just type in you know something gibberish into this it's not going to do anything until we actually try to submit that particular uh, form and we'll get into how we actually submit forms when we do get into processing data so this will give you, this was sort of a, a super fast crash course on HTML, but it will give you a rough overview of the different things you can do. Um, believe it or not, this is most of what you're gonna actually need to do in HTML. There's not a whole lot beyond this, but once we add in uh, cascading style sheets, things get a lot more interesting in HTML because we can start formatting things a lot more effectively. So we'll get into all of that in later lectures. For now, thanks for watching, and uh, you know we'll we'll get we'll do some more here in the next steps.